In our last episode, we finally found a water chip. We found it in the ruins of Vault 12, which we discovered was underneath the Necropolis, a city built from the ruins of pre-war Bakersfield. We were sent to find a water chip by the overseer of Vault 13. Theirs had broken down, and they only had 150 days worth of water left. With the chip in hand, we can head back to Vault 13 to save our fellow vault dwellers from certain death. We arrive at Vault 13, the vault of the future, built inside a mountain. Starting at the entrance, we'll come back here on our way out. Ian has never been to a vault before. He's says that he has heard about some of these places. This one seems nice and clean, though a bit too clean for his taste. We have to take the elevator to see the overseer, but before we head up to the command center, we can take the elevator to floor two to see how our neighbors have been faring while we've been away. On the second floor, we see many of the vault dwellers in their rooms. In the second room to the left, we find our old friend Lyle. We can reminisce, see how he's holding up, but we learn that everyone in the vault is a bit on edge. They're doing all right for now, but they really hope that we find the water chip. Depending on the date when we arrive back at Vault 13, we can arrive to learn that Lyle here has had some of his water stolen. The water supply is so short that the overseer is rationing it out. Due to the rations, there is a water thief, and Lyle is sadly a victim of this thief. Everyone is scared, and they don't know what to do. We can offer to take a look into the situation. He says thanks, and by the way, please find that water chip. The theft would have never happened if they had just had a working water chip. Moving one room over to the left, we find two people in here, one of whom is labeled an upset Vault 13 citizen. I think you should leave me and my family alone, Oxhorn. It would be for the best. Don't you have a job to do, he says. Hurry up and find that chip. We can instigate this guy by saying, don't tell me what to do, loser boy. But if we do, he turns hostile, as does the entire vault. Seeing as how these are our friends and neighbors, we don't want that. So instead, we can talk with them. The upset vault dweller asks us how the search is going. If we answer truthfully and say pretty well, he says, oh, okay, and ends the conversation. But if we say not so good, he begins to vent. We knew that there was no hope. I don't think we'll get a new chip in time. I think that some of us should move outside before it's too late. If we say that that might not be the best idea, the upset Vault 13 citizen says, maybe you should come to one of our meetings. Teresa has some good ideas. We meet in her room on the second level at five o'clock each evening. If we say that moving out of the vault may be a good idea, he says that's what Teresa thinks. She's got it all worked out. We're thinking of leaving the vault soon. And he again invites us to another meeting. If we wait until 5 p.m., we see a vault dweller walking into the second room to the northwest. Heading inside, we find quite a congregation here. All of them are upset vault citizens. The woman with the red hair is Teresa. She is in charge of this little meeting. She says, welcome to our meeting. As you have been picked by the overseer to go outside, perhaps you can give us some advice before our move to the outdoors as well. We can say, yeah, here's some advice. Don't drink the glowing water. And she responds sarcastically, thank you so much. I can see you're going to be a big help. Why don't you just leave? If we apologize for our sarcasm, she says, it's only a matter of time before we run out of water here. But the vault was never meant to keep people inside forever. We have the people and the supplies to move outside now. There we'll have a better chance. We can try to reason with her and say, look, outside is too dangerous. But she argues that it's more dangerous to stay inside. After all, they lack water now. She tells us that she doesn't think the outside could possibly be as bad as the overseer says it is. I mean, our ancestors lived outside, right? She says. She thinks that the overseer is paranoid and that he's just trying to control them. There are two ways this conversation can go. If we don't take her seriously or if we are rude to her, she gets defensive. She says even if we do find another water chip, what happens when it breaks? And then the next one, and the next one. 
Living in the vault, she argues, is just not sustainable. If we encourage her that she's on the right track and that she should leave, she asks us for any advice. We can tell her about some of the places we visited, including Shady Sands, but nothing really comes from this conversation. After giving the advice, she never leaves the vault. If we try to defend the overseer by saying that he probably has his reasons, she accuses us of being under his thumb. She says that the fact that he sent us out into the wasteland proves that it's not as dangerous out there. She claims that he has a control complex and accuses us of being a stupid fool for believing him. If we choose any of the options that put her on the defensive, then a few days later when we return, we see that she and the upset vault dwellers are gone. We also find them gone if we return to the vault with the water chip in hand, having never talked with them before they left. However, there is a way to convince them to stay. If we choose the option to say, the Overseer is simply trying to protect us, the outside world is dangerous to the unprepared. She responds by saying, I suppose, I always figured that he just had some sort of power trip, but I guess that he wouldn't be the Overseer if he wasn't really concerned about our welfare, would he? I guess we should just wait to see if you can find the chip. And with that, she and the upset vault dwellers stay. And we earn 750 experience for convincing them. Most of the other rooms on the second level have generic vault dwellers and nothing much interesting, but in the room to the southwest, we find a vault dweller named Cindy. She says that she's scared and she hopes that we'll find the water chip. She's greatly concerned about the water thief who was loose in the vault. People who had their water rations stolen weren't given replacements by the overseer. The only reason that they have survived is because friends shared some of their rations with them. Cindy is so paranoid that she has begun to guard her water rations. The overseer even put a guard outside the lockers holding the water rations, but then this water thief knocked the guard out in the middle of the night and stole more water. She ends by asking if we can find out who's been doing this. To find the water thief, we have to head to the third floor. This is the command center. The room immediately to the right is a commons room where people watched films and played games. But heading down the hallway to the south, we find a guard posted outside of a locker room. This is the man who hands out the water rations. If we arrive earlier in the game, he says that he doesn't think there's going to be that much trouble. After all, we're all family here in Vault 13, and who would harm family? Even though he is guarding this room, we can go inside, and if we loot all the lockers, we can walk away with dozens of flasks of water. These just end up as miscellaneous items in our inventory. We can't drink them, but they do fetch a good price from merchants. Some of the other lockers have chems inside. You can walk away with a first aid kit and some mentats. Though, as we leave, the guard says, please don't take so many supplies. We need those. But if we arrive later in the game, we discover that the guard is not feeling very well. Someone cracked his head open with a big pipe. He went to the medic, but his head still hurts. He was attacked late one night. He usually goes back to his home by eight, but after hearing reports of the water thief, he decided to stand outside the door to see if he could find anyone snooping around. The next thing he knew, he woke up in the med lab with a big bump on his head. We're still welcome to take as much as we want since we're on a mission for the vault, though he again urges us not to take too much. But the guard gives us our biggest clue. He was attacked at night, so perhaps if we wait until night, we can find this water thief. If we hide in the common room and wait until midnight, we see the elevator door open up and a man walk down the hallway. First, he turns to the left, walking towards the library, but then he stops and mills around for a bit. Then he turns around and heads towards the water storage room. We see him open up a locker, and then he quickly heads out and walks back to the elevator. If we step out of the common room, we can intercept him, and we can ask him what he's doing here at this time of night. He says, oh, um, I was worried about the vault, and I had a nightmare. I, I couldn't get back to sleep, so I thought I'd go take a walk to relax. If we're insistent, we could say, I'm sorry, but I'm looking for the water thief, and I need to see what you're carrying. And he immediately gets defensive. Don't touch me. I don't have anything. Now leave me alone. To make any progress with him, we have to threaten him. Would you rather have a bullet in your head? He says, okay, okay, I've got nothing to hide. Look for yourself. But after we search him, we are teleported to a vault security officer who says thanks for solving that case. 
This will help morale quite a bit. So presumably we did indeed find the stolen water on his person. And for solving the case of the water thief, we gain a thousand experience. This guard is guarding the armory. She says that though they don't need to use the weapons very often, they still have an armory filled with weapons just in case. The weapons, she explains, are used to enforce the rules of the vault. If people didn't follow the laws of the vault, it would jeopardize the safety of everyone. She's really insistent about following laws. We can say that we have found some lawless places in our travels, and she says, You see, I knew that would happen. People obeying the law is the only thing that has saved the vault from misery and destruction. Keep up the good work, vault dweller. Now we have an option here to try and convince her to let us into the armory. At first, she says that the overseer has not authorized her to open the armory to anyone. We have a couple of options. We can walk away by saying, okay, thanks. Or we can plead with her and say, please, I really need them. But she says, no, I can't do it. The only way to gain access to this armory is to first ask her who has access to the armory. And she says, the overseer, myself, and the rest of her security team. We can then say it sounds like only people with need have access. And she agrees. And we can then say, well, I have need. After all, I'm scouring the wasteland for this vault's water. Please open the door. But this is a speech check. If we don't pass the speech check, she says, you make a good argument, but I'm sorry, I can't let you in. However, if we do pass the speech check, she says, hmm, now that you mention it, it sounds like you do have a need. Here, let me open the door for you. Heading inside the armory, we find a number of containers. This is a great way to get a shotgun earlier in the game. We find a shotgun and some shells in a locker, some knives and a 10 millimeter pistol. But if we arrive later, like I am now, the contents are really not that useful. But we've got a chip to deliver. So heading east, we can move into the command center to talk with the overseer Jacorian. He sits at his overseer's desk, elevated above everyone else in the vault. You're back and in one piece. How goes the search? Before giving him the water chip, we have a number of dialogue options that can give us other rewards. Instead of saying that we found the chip, we can say the search isn't going very well. And we can learn more about Jacorian's motives by saying, Look, I noticed that the radiation count outside is pretty low. Why don't we just move the people out of the vault? We've debated this before. You ought to know now after being out there. You think the rest of us could survive that? Besides, I'd be out of a job. I'm management. It's not like I know how to do anything useful. You know, I haven't found the chip yet, but why can't we just make a replacement? Oh, you never did listen to me. We don't have the necessary parts anymore. We've used up all the supplies required. Okay, thanks. Look, I know it's got to be tough, but we're counting on you. And we're running out of time. Please keep trying. I still say we just pack everyone up and move out of here. This isn't the best time to debate that. Get the chip. Give us the option. Most of these people, including me, won't survive out there. And this exchange really tells us why Jacorian is so insistent that people stay inside the vault. He's mainly worried about his own skin. He doesn't believe he has any skills that are suited to a wasteland. He's in management. He's not active. He's not a survivor. He believes that if he had to scratch an existence for himself out in the mud and dirt of the wasteland, he'd die. And he thinks that there are other people in the vault a lot like him. For his and their sake, we must all stay in the vault to keep the population genetically diverse for the benefit of those who can't survive on their own. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't have the chip yet. Don't be sorry. I know you're trying your best, and that means a lot. But you can't give up now. I haven't found it, but I have seen some amazing things. We don't have time for this. We need the chip. Time's running out. Well, I'll let you know when I find it, but I haven't found it yet. Is there some problem? Do you need more equipment? Is there anything we can do to help? Actually, I could use some more stuff. Here, take the last of our ammo and portable healing supplies. We're in trouble. Hurry. If we convince him to give us more gear, he hands us two stim packs and some jacketed hollow point 10 millimeter ammunition. Now we could be rude by saying, you know what, you guys could get off your fannies and help me look for the water chip. Do what? With who? Anyone else would be less qualified and have less supplies. It'd be suicide. 
Your choice. I'll do my best, but I don't know if it'll be enough. It has to be. If you fail, so does the vault. Got it. Do your best. Remember, we're all counting on you. We've already seen one low water animation in the game. We saw it in our episode about Harold, but there are two others. Once a hundred days pass, we see a similar animation, only this time all the screens in the computers blink red, and the water technician pounds on his computer. And the final one is if we fail to get the water chip in time. If so, we find the water technician dead, slumped over in his seat, and we fail the game. But if we have the water chip, we can say, yes, I found it. But I think we should talk more about letting people leave the vault if they want to. Well, you've certainly earned that right. But let's take care of survival first. Give me the chip, and we'll discuss this when you give your report. I don't know. Please, the chip. All right, fair enough. Okie dokie, one moment, the chip is initializing. Here, there, 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 there it goes. Self-test is grain. Reboot is good. Ha! It's working! And it looks like we have a winner! <laughs> oh, you've... You've saved us. You've done it. Ah, it was nothing. Nothing? No. Oh no, it was something. Don't downplay what you've done. You've saved a lot of lives. You're welcome, Jacorian. You saved the vault. You should be proud. But now we need your report. We'll get it from you in the library. Please, go there now. With that, we get teleported to the library. We earn 7,500 experience points for returning the chip. We get a message saying that we log our reports from our travels into the library computer. Now that we're done, we can return to the Overseer to finalize our progress. But before we go, there are two more opportunities to earn some experience in the library. We find two functional terminals here. If we try to read them, it says that we are more likely to find success if we take a more scientific approach. So using our science skill, we can examine the terminals, and the screen fades to black. We spend some time researching some important information. This is actually an intelligence check, and if our intelligence is high enough, we are rewarded with 350 experience. We can do this twice, equaling 700 experience in total. To do it a second time, we move up to the northern terminal in this same room, and again use our science skill. When done, we can go back to the command center to again talk with Jacorian. Now remember, we were in the library because we had to give Jacorian a full account of our travels, which means he now knows everything we know, including the existence of the Master and his super mutant army. I, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the water supply is stabilized. Actually, we're rebuilding our reserves. You did great. I, uh... I am a little concerned, however. About what? I, I don't like your reports. What was in the reports, that is. <laughs> in fact, they scared the heck out of me. It's those mutants. I've done some calculations and... Well, I've come to an unpleasant conclusion. What's that? <sighs> the mutant population is far greater than could be expected by natural growth or mutations. This leads me to believe in... I don't really understand it, but... It looks like someone's generating new mutants. And at a startling rate. Can you say that again? Without the confusion? Someone's making mutants. There must be a lab out there somewhere, then. Exactly. And as you've probably guessed, none of these mutations could have occurred naturally, even with the radiation from the war. Well, what do you need me to do? As long as someone is creating hostile mutants at this rate, the vault's safety is at stake. Find and destroy this lab as soon as you can. Before heading out, we can say, look, Jacorian, I'm a little lost. Do you have any advice as to where I should start looking? Well, based on the information you provided about population density, I think you should concentrate your search to the west. <sighs> well, once more into the breach, my friend. You have no idea how sorry I am to send you back out. Well, great, we save our vault. 
But after all of that, we have to go back out there and find the source of the mutants. Heading back to the elevator, we can take it to the first floor. Moving all the way to the right, we find the med lab, which has a doctor on duty 24 hours a day. We can take advantage of this guy to be healed for free. On our way out of the vault, we see a locker against the wall, and inside, we can walk away with two flares. On the other side of the vault door, we again see that skeleton lying on the ground. But if we inspect him, we learn that his name is Ed. Ed is dead. Ed here is one of the many vault dwellers whom Jacorian has sent out into the wasteland before choosing us. Ed didn't get past the rats, but as we will learn later, there was at least one other vault dweller who made it pretty far into the wasteland. Now, Jacorian said that we should probably start our search by heading west, but west is a large area and that's kind of vague, so we should start with what we know. But we learned at the hub of the existence of a group called the Brotherhood of Steel. Some people called them kooks and crazies, but others said that they do stockpile and hoard powerful weapons. Perhaps they would be able to help us in our search for the Mutant Lab. The Brotherhood of Steel's headquarters is at a place called Lost Hills. We find Lost Hills by traveling southwest of Vault 13 or we could travel due west and slightly north of Junktown. It may be more lucrative to take a caravan here, but no matter how we get here, we notice a small building surrounded by a chain-link fence. Menacing guards in heavy armor patrol the area. We'll talk to the guard to the right first. He says, greetings and welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. When we ask him what the Brotherhood is, he says, we're a collective of men and women who have dedicated their lives to the preservation of technology. When we ask him about his armor, he says, this is powered combat infantry armor model T-51B, or more commonly known as power armor. We can say that we've been wandering the wastes for weeks and weeks now, and we've never seen armor like that before. And he says the Brotherhood are the sole bearers of the power armor in the wastes. Only the honored and knights of the highest stature are given the privilege to wear the ultimate armor. We can say, well, how do I find out more about your technology? And he says, to do that, you'll have to join the Brotherhood. And to do that, you'll have to talk with Cabot. Cabot is the guard standing next to him. Oh man, powered armor, high-tech weapons, that sounds pretty great. So turning to his right, we can talk with Cabot to see if we can become a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. Hello, and welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. May I ask your business here? Well, he seems friendly enough. What do you do? Well, uh, I'm an initiate. Uh, right now, my, my job is to greet people at the door. Can I ask you a few questions? I'm sorry, I, I really can't. They, they said not to. Goodbye. Okay. Well, your job doesn't sound terribly exciting, but you know what? I'd love to join the Brotherhood. Uh, well, I, I talked to the High Elder, and he said that not just anyone can join. He uh, said you have to complete a quest first. A quest? Did you do a quest before you joined? Uh, not exactly, but uh, things are a bit different right now. Uh, so tell me what's different. I'm sorry, I, I really can't. They, they said not to. Goodbye. Okay, well, what's this quest? You have to go to the ruins of the ancient order that's south of here. Uh, you've got to go inside and bring back something that proves that you were there. Okay, well, how will you know that whatever I bring back was from that place? This place is high-tech. There's things inside like you've never seen before. Oh, uh, it's also radioactive. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. You'll do it? You will? Great, just bring it back here. <laughs> Good luck. So they're sending us on some sort of quest, but Cabot sounded strange when he gave it to us. Turning to the other guard, he says, I can't believe it, they're sending him down there? So you took the famous glow quest, eh? And he laughs. But we can correct him and say, no, no, I'm going to the Ancient Order. And he says, glow, Ancient Order, it's the same thing. It's still not a good place to visit. When we ask him to elaborate, he says, well, to start, it's a good 18 days travel to the southeast. And then there's the radiation. There's a reason none of us have ever gone to the Ancient Order. If you don't have Radex, you'll be cooked before you even know what hit you. So let me get this straight, we can say. Why does the Ancient Order have two names? 
He explains by saying most top ciders think that it's just one big radioactive hole. Thus, the name became The Glow, and some people even call it The Hot Spot. But we in the Brotherhood know the truth. According to ancient writings, this place was the source of all of our technology. And who knows what may still be there. But to make the Brotherhood proud, we have to head off to The Glow. And it is indeed an 18-day trip. So it sure is a good thing that we found the water chip first. But the glow is a fascinating place, chock full of all sorts of pre-war lore. We'll have to cover the glow in its own video. And with that, we cover the full story of Vault 13 in Fallout 1. I say the full story, but there are a few things we haven't covered yet. We never learned from the game exactly what experiment vault Tech was conducting here at Vault 13. However, we get some answers, albeit conflicting answers, from the Fallout Bible and Fallout 2. In the Fallout Bible, we learned that the experiment was to keep the door to Vault 13 closed for 200 years as a study of what prolonged isolation will do to a population. However, we learn from a member of the Enclave in Fallout 2 that the door to Vault 13 was to remain closed until its subjects were needed. And he says that Vault 13 was a control vault. I suppose all of these things could be true. vault Tech could have foreseen that radiation would have done strange things to humanity's DNA. And so they set aside some vaults to act as control vaults, where they could isolate uncorrupted pre-war DNA. Perhaps the original plan was to harvest that DNA to reboot humanity at a later date, say 200 years after the apocalypse. At any rate, the water chip was not intended to go bust this early. Though there is some evidence that we observe in Fallout 2 that the water chip was actually sabotaged. However, there is much debate as to whether or not this is canon, because this information is given to us almost in the form of an Easter egg. But we'll have to tackle that topic when we work our way through Fallout 2. And we still have to see how Jacorian responds if we ever find this mutant lab. And we have to find the other Vault Dweller that was sent out before us. We'll be sure to tackle both of those topics in upcoming videos. I publish new Fallout content each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss the next video on The Glow, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It took a while, but kids' sizes are now available for all of the designs on my shop. So if you've been itching for a design for your little one, Oxhorn's got you covered. They also come on other products as well, smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if you're interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow bright and early with a brand new video.